We begin this hour with what may be the first clear sign of real dollars and cents consequences of Florida's politically charged atmosphere. Over the hundreds of new laws on the books in the last few months, the ones that go to what's called the culture wars have been getting almost all the attention in and out of state. The governor's campaign for president only supercharged that attention. In May, the NAACP put out a travel advisory. Organizers said that was in protest over what they called anti-civil rights moves like restrictions on African-American history lessons and diversity training. That advisory was cited by at least one group called a Parent Miracles Foundation that decided not to bring its business, its repeat business, an annual event to Broward County this year. And that organization is now one of 10 on a spreadsheet of groups who are taking their convention business elsewhere. That was compiled by Stacy Ritter, president and CEO of Visit Lauderdale, which is Broward's uh, official tourism marketing agency and has been way longer than you've even <laughs> been with it. So happy to have you at the table with us today. Thank you. Thank Thanks you for, for the coming invitation. In. My pleasure. I, I want to just kind of set up our conversation. This is not about politics. We are not, po we are not partisan. You are not a partisan organization. So this is not about a political discussion. It's about an economic discussion. And you're really seeing the effects of that. Tell me why you compiled that list. Well, we compile a list uh, at Visit Lauderdale of group business that we win and lose and have been doing it since at least I've been there for seven years. So this is not something new. We always write down the reasons groups either choose not to come or the business we win, why they, they've chosen to come. So this isn't new for us. Uh, but this specifically has become an issue. It started as a trickle last year. A couple of people can't, a couple of groups canceled last year after last year's session, and the tr trickle has become more pronounced this year. But yes, this is not a partisan conversation. Tourism transcends politics. People travel where they like to go, mm -hmm. regardless of who's in charge. This is about business. So, all right, so let me just understand. You are compiling lists with the reasons. The, what we saw, I guess it's because what I asked for, <laughs> is the list of, of, it was nine, and this weekend was another um, a joiner radio show was added this weekend, so it's now 10. Is, is the list bigger of groups that have opted out for other reasons? Sure. Tell sure. me about that. Uh, yeah. We lose business whether because maybe the convention center is too small for the group. Maybe we don't have enough hotel rooms within the vicinity that the group wants. Maybe the price is too high. Maybe they choose not to have a beach destination. They want to go someplace else. Um, and, and one of the groups that we've lost went to Milwaukee, which was really like why <laughs> <laughs> they don't have a beach people they don't have no, a beach well um, I don't know. Milwaukee's on the lake isn't they it? don't have a beach Glenn. come on <laughs> let's be real um so it's just something that we do so that for the next time when we reach out to that group which we often do or if a request for proposal comes from the group again we can be mindful of why they didn't choose us back in whatever and work on getting that business going forward that's, negotiating that's the sell price. of it yes of yes it. and and the fact that we are expanding our convention center we've got a billion and a half dollar project at the convention center where we're building an 801 room omni hotel as well and expanding to the east will allow us to bring 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 bigger conferences to Broward County, conferences we weren't able to get before. I mean, clearly, j your organization sells Broward County <laughs> to tourism. That is what you do, right? I mean, our, that is, that's what you do. Our mission is to bring visitors to Broward County. Yeah. But we like to say that our calling is to keep people employed. Oh, okay. <laughs> we, well, we saw what happened when the, when the pandemic hit. Yes. Tens of thousands of people lost their jobs, many of them in tourism. Of course. We're talking hotels and restaurants and attractions, yeah. retail, uh, and so we need to keep people employed so that Broward's economic engines keep moving and people can feed their families and they can pay their bills and they can have the dignity and respect that work provides. Yeah. So that's what we think we do best. So so now we have this component and I want to get your perspective on these um, these groups that are that have some have actually canceled, some have just not chosen. Mm -hmm. The booking wasn't there and they've just decided against. Do you think the ones that cited things like politics or a partisan atmosphere, do you think uh, in your perspective, was actual politics or partisanship, or was it the perception of all of that in the national atmosphere right now, particularly because the governor is running for president and, and it is in his purview to do what he needs to do nationwide, which he's doing. Politics or perception of Florida, what do you think? 
Well, there are 20 million people who live in our beautiful state. Uh, we don't all think like one, we're not monolithic. So, uh, but certainly the spotlight has moved to Florida more intensely these days because of the political environment. Yeah. That does play into people's perceptions and people's perceptions of reality these days. But we're not doing anything differently than we've been doing for 30 years. You know, Broward County, I, re I recently read an article that suggested Broward County is more diverse than the island of Manhattan. Two million people, 170 nations represented by our residents. They speak 147 languages. Diversity and culture is in our DNA. We celebrate it. We want you to celebrate it. And, you so. know, I was, I was going to ask you because I noticed that uh, some of, I was looking up the people who were getting the emails in your organization, and one of the employees has the title Multicultural Business Development. So clearly there is an eye to bring in a diverse population of visitors. Yes, we also have a dedicated LGBTQ plus um, de uh, department called in inclusive Inclusivity and Accessibility. And we were the first CVB in the world to have an LGBTQ plus dedicated department to bring in the gay population to come to visit a diverse, inclusive, and accessible destination. We're not doing anything any differently, but the spotlight is shining more brightly. So what are you hearing personally? You pick up the phone rings, you pick <laughs> up that phone, and what do you, I mean, get, get granular with us and, and bring us in behind the scenes. Well, and, and I know this is a difficult conversation to have from someone who has a, has a message. Respectfully, I know everyone wants to be shown in the best light, and, and I have no problem with that. But I think it's very important for us as a community to understand how people see our community and the economic consequences of that. People see our community as diverse and inclusive, as welcoming. That's a, a, that's a good thing. It's a wonderful thing because it is who we are. It's, it's not something that we've had to mold. It is something that it has evolved, and I hate this word, but it has evolved organically. When I moved to Broward County in 1974, when I was a baby. Me too. <laughs> I was not a baby. Uh, it was very white, very male-centered, very conservative, uh, very straight. And Broward County has evolved into a, what, and I know this is going to sound really corny. Well, I think that's a national thing we, we as are well. A, we are a melting pot. I, I, I really, truly believe that Broward County provides the American dream that people are looking for. We have a very large immigrant population, and we celebrate that. So when you, okay, now back to the travel business, when you get those phone calls lately, and you said it started last year. It did. And, all right, well, take me through that. Why, why last year? At what point last year and what did you first see? It, it started uh, right after the legislative session of 22 with the first Don't Say Gay. So that would have been March. May, May, because the legislative, uh, wait, oh yeah, March, because last year last they met, year. Her, correct, yeah. correct. Mm -hmm. So it started with that. And then there were, some, there were some conversations with boards of directors about choice and how choice was being restricted in the state of Florida. And I talked to them about our destination. And yes, there are state politics that we cannot in, in any way affect in our particular, it, with our particular space. Was this, all right, no, I, don't, I just want to stop you so we, we understand why. Were those phone calls about people who were concerned for themselves or concerned with the politics or C, concerned with the membership of their group and bringing a sense of that kind of dynamic into the group or none of the above or all of the above? <laughs> uh, uh, all of the above in part. Uh, and and let's, let's understand the group business, the conference business. They rely on attendees. In order to pay the costs and make some money, Conferences have to have attendees. They have to have the registrations in, in great numbers to be able to put on the event in the first place. Many of them are concerned that they won't get people coming here, that their conferences won't be successful if they're held in Florida, and they won't get the number of attendees required. So that is in part. There are boards of directors. These are corporate folks who are also conscious of the greater story. They're very conscious about DEI these days, and they don't want to suggest that they're, they're going to someplace to bring their business, which may not be as friendly to their core values as others. You know, I, I want to stop for a quick break, but I want to pick up right there when we come back, because I have a few more questions about that from both sides of the political perspective. So stay tuned. We will be right back. We are back with Stacey Ritter, President and CEO of Visit Lauderdale, the marketing arm, the visitor and convention bureau of sorts of Broward County, 
Talking about the impact that the perception or the politics of Florida seem to be having on the convention business and the, and the visitor business, and you have that in black and white, and again, I want to set up that this is not a political <laughs> conversation. I want to make you comfortable being with us because I'm very grateful for your time, and I know Thank it's you. not an easy conversation to have, and our, oh, we have a very diverse political audience here and very engaged and also an audience that wants to see good things happen. We all have kind of the same goal. We all want good, right? How we get there might be a, a bit different, but we all want good things. But we were talking about the, um, the large number of people that are in a visit from a convention and the people who organize that have to make sure that all of them are gonna be happy and willing to spend their money here. And that means that there's gonna be a very wide political uh, perspective, a base of politi political perspectives in those groups. So it's not about this, we don't like this politics, is it? It's about how do we please the people? How do we please the attendees? How do we make sure that the registrations are sufficient, that the cost of the convention will be covered, and then, may and then maybe some? Uh, because they all rely on registrations in order to cover the costs. And it's important to also understand that group business books years in advance. So right now we're booking right. 26, 27, 28, 29, and 30. It's very difficult to cancel a convention in the year of the convention. Ha has that happened this time? No, because where do you go? Every place else will be booked up. So the 10 on the list that you, uh, for anyone just joining us, there's, there's a list of, of conventions that either opted out or have not chosen Broward. And the reasons of that and the, what we asked for in our public records request are the ones that have political reasons, and there's 10 of them. And so when you get these and you get that reason, what happens when it is in 2024? which is but right around the corner. It's unlikely that it would happen. Uh, 2024 is usually, it would be booked by now, but there are there are those who conversations being had that I have no doubt that there are conferences who are, which are scheduled here for 24, which are looking for someplace else, but won't let us know until they actually have someplace else to go. It's hard to find within the year or year and a half someplace to move a large conference. Have you heard that the conferences that are have been booked for a few years and are coming next year, have lost attendees for any kind of political reasons? No, and, and we wouldn't know the number of attendees until after the event, when they do an after action report, because in order to get paid, they have to uh, fulfill certain deliverables under the contract with us. Have you heard of anybody, any of your colleagues in Miami-Dade or Tampa, St. Pete or Jacksonville or the Panhandle, huge convention destinations as well, your competition, I suppose. <laughs> in some respects. But, uh, but colleagues in a way as well. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, have you heard a similar theme from anywhere else in Florida? Sure, Orlando, uh, Orlando has, has publicized a couple of conventions they've lost. Miami lost a, a Black County Managers Association meeting that was scheduled to come earlier this year. So For, the, for those reasons? For the same reasons. Uh, yes, uh, and, and there are a variety of them, whether it's the NAACP Travel Advisory or the, or the Equality Florida Travel Advisory or the LUPAC Travel Advisory. You know, as you're talking travel advisories, it dawns on me that it goes both ways. You, I don't know, Senator Rick Scott actually posted a travel advisory. If you are, I, I don't want to quote him. <laughs> I know the quote. <laughs> but the, the gist of it was, if you are a communist or a socialist, don't come to Florida. That was a travel advisory for very different reasons. Well, in Visit Lauderdale, mm -hmm. our, uh, our tagline is everyone under the sun. And when we say it, we mean it. So we don't care what your politics are. We don't care who you are. We don't care who you, actually, you know what we do care? We care that you feel free to be you when you come to our destination. So everyone's welcome. Everyone under the sun is welcome. And we are going to continue to press that message because it's true for us. What happened statewide? Have you taken concerns to, I know Visit Florida is, is a quasi-governmental agency. It's public-private, right? Did I get that right? Mm -hmm. So. So there is some governmental ties. Yes. And, you know, if you are in Florida government, there's a, a man at the top at the moment, and there's a legislature at the top, and if you're not on board, then get off board. That's kind of the theme. Power has consequences and privileges. As do laws um, as have do consequences. Laws. Absolutely. So, so Visit Florida is the sort of what you do, but statewide. Correct. Have you been in touch with them at all? Uh, no, not about, although they are familiar with the message, with, with the issue and they have put out their own message. 
uh, which aligns very much with what the leadership in Tallahassee is saying. But uh, I have spoken to uh, Florida Destinations, which is our advocacy arm. Visit Florida is not an advocacy arm. They are a marketing organization, as we are. We mm -hmm. do not do advocacy. Right. But I have spoken to Destinations Florida, our marketing arm, and suggested it's time for the CVBs to have a conversation because lost business, losing jobs is, you know, when you're a destination which relies on tourism, whether you're a state destination, just the state in, in general, or Broward County specifically, and you rely on tourism, anything that, that, can, that can impact tourism, whether it's a hurricane or Zika or what it, the pandemic, that's bad for business. This looks like it could be bad for business. I believe it's an unintended consequence of these laws. I think it's something that might not have been contemplated. I know when I was in the legislature, I passed, you know, voted for lots of things that had unintended consequences, which I then tried to fix. I'm hoping we can try to fix this so that it doesn't get worse. What is your plan and Visit Lauderdale's plan in the, and, and again, I wanna really stress that to your point, so much impacts tourism perceptions impact tourism, perceptions of things that may not even be the case, and, and maybe you're facing some of that as well. But what's, what's the plan now? Is, is there one short term to just take on these kind of issues? We are going to do what we have been doing for 30 years. We are going to talk about how we are everyone under the sun, how we welcome everyone under the sun, how Broward County has people, residents from all over the world living there, and we bring visitors from all over the world to have the most amazing experiences about their lives. That's what we are going to continue to talk about, the diversity and inclusivity of our destination, the celebration of to be whoever you want to be, wear whatever you want to wear, identify however you want to identify. We simply don't care. Just come and have an amazing experience with beautiful beaches and great food and sunshine and warm weather. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna clip, clip this tape and you can use it in one of your commercials. I wanna, before we run out of time, I just wanna, I, I actually, over the weekend, spoke to some of the organizers and convention planners that were among the groups, uh, one that pulled out and one that, that decided not to book in the first place. Um, that was a really big one, $13 million, a national toy retailers convention. Which we worked on for years. Yeah, I, I want to let you know that they said, even though I received in my public records request emails where they do cite a partisan atmosphere, they said that was not the reason. They said there were other reasons, all things being equal, that might have bubbled up to the top, but it did not. And their biggest issue, they told me, was their budget, the costs. South Florida is a pretty expensive place. Yes, but we, yeah. we are willing to negotiate price with any group that wants to come to, uh, to, come to us. And, and let, let me just also, before we do run out of time, let your Take viewers your time. Oh. We, we've got all day. I don't want you. Well, well, I don't have all day. Um, I got to go go, get, go back out there and sell my sell my destination. Um, that it's not just the business we know we've lost. It's the request for proposals that we know we're not getting. Yeah. That we're not even able to compete for the opportunity to bring conferences here. And I can't quantify that at all. But we are always willing to talk with groups, negotiate price, negotiate hotel room price, negotiate convention sp center space price to bring the business here because that having that conference in our destination, the trickle down economics, which I know is a, also a, 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 a charged expression, but the ability to, to stay in a hotel, to, to keep the people employed and go to a restaurant, Go out car, to Sawgrass the Mills. Industry Sawgrass is Mills Mall we'll is the second largest tourism destination in the state of Florida behind, guess what? I'm not gonna say it, but it's got two ears. Um, you can say Disney on the show. We're <laughs> no, all, we're I don't all wanna, I, I don't wanna market any other destination. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, it, but <laughs> all right. we need to bring people here. Yes. And regardless of the cost, we are willing to work with everybody and anybody who wants to bring their convention here because that's what we do. Will you keep in touch and, and let us know how that goes? I will. Stacey Ritter, great to have you at the Thank table you. today. Thank you. Appreciate it.